Act One of Bachezé by Jean Racine, translated by Robert Bruce Boswell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Introduction. The time to which this tragedy relates is much later than that of any other of Racine's historical plays. The capture of Babylon, or rather Baghdad, from the Persians by Sultan Amaruth the Fourth, on which the catastrophe of the plot depends, occurred only a year before the poet's birth, viz. 1638. And our author thought it desirable to justify himself for choosing a subject so recent by the precedent of Aeschylus, whose Persac commemorated the abortive expedition of Xerxes against Greece, in which struggle he himself had taken an active part. The unfamiliar manners and customs of the distant East may compensate in some measure, he maintains, for proximity in point of time. Racine derived his information about the circumstances of Bajazet's death from the narrative of the Comte de Seja, who was French ambassador at Constantinople at the time and had some personal knowledge of the unfortunate prince. CHARACTERS Bajazet, brother of Sultan Amrath, read by Vocal Penguin. Roxana, Sultana, the favorite of Sultan Amrath, read by Matea Bracic. Atalid, a Turkish damsel of royal blood, read by Avayi. Achmet, the Grand Vizier. Read by Todd. Osman, friend of the Grand Vizier. Read by Alan Mapstone. Fatima, a slave of the Sultana. Read by Jen Broda. Sarah, a slave of Atalid. Read by Sonia. Stage directions. Read by Larry Wilson. The scene is laid at Constantinople formerly called Byzantium, in the Seraglio of the Sultan. Act One, Scene One, Achmet Osman Come, follow me. Here the Sultana comes anon. Meanwhile, we may converse together. How long, my lord, has entrance been allowed to these forbidden precincts, where so lately the eyes that dared to pry would soon have closed in death? When you have heard all that has passed, you will not be surprised that I am free to enter. But enough of that, dear Osmond. How long to my impatience seemed the time of your return? How glad am I to see you here in Stamboul? What secrets have you learned by travelling so far on my behalf? Tell me sincerely what your eyes have seen. Consider, Osman, that on your report the future fortune of the Crescent hangs. How fares it with the army and the sultan? True to her prince, did Babylon, unmoved by terror, see our host Sir Walls in compass? the mustered persians to her aid were marching and daily nearer drew to amareth's camp he weary with the tedious fruitless siege seemed willing to leave babylon at rest and without making fresh assaults in vain was waiting for the persians to give battle but as you know sir make what haste i might long is the journey hither from those parts a thousand obstacles my course impeded nor can i tell all that has happened since our valiant janissaries how did they comport themselves do they to aramuth yield faithful allegiance can you read men's hearts enjoys the sultan undisputed power if one may take his word he is content and seemed full confident of victory but his apparent calmness cannot cheat us he knows not the repose that he assumes in vain he masks habitual distrust and grants his janissaries easy access he cannot but remember how he wished to pair that gallant force of half its strength 
and as he said to scape their tutelage oft have i heard them talk among themselves how amorath fears them and how they fear him that sore still galls them flatter as he may they murmur at your absence and regret the time so dear to their courageous hearts when under you sure of success they fought what think you osmond that my glory still in their remembrance lives and stirs their valour that they would gladly follow me again and hail the voice of their vizier with welcome the fortune of the fight will rule their conduct they must see amurath's victory or defeat though loath my lord to march with him to lead them they have to keep unstained their martial glory they'll not betray honour so hardly won but failure or success depends on fate if seconding their valour amurath's star awards him victory on babylon's plains then will you see them to byzantium bring submissive homage and a blind obedience but if the heavy hand of destiny crush in the conflict his aspiring schemes of empire doubt not his disgraceful flight would spur their hatred on to bold contempt and his disasters would to them appear high heaven's decree of wrath and reprobation meanwhile if rumour's voice has spoken truly three months ago he from the army sent hither a slave charged with some secret message all in the camp trembled for bajazeth fearing the sultan had with cruel order dispatched him to demand his brother's head such was his purpose ay that slave has come and shown his mandate which was disregarded what shall the sultan see that slave again without this pledge of your allegiance rendered the slave is dead a secret order cast him full many a fathom deep beneath the exine his lengthened absence will surprise the sultan soon he will seek the cause and take revenge what will you answer him perchance ere then he'll have more pressing matters to engage him i know that amurath has borne my ruin i know what welcome his return will bring me to tear me from his soldier's heart behold how he excludes me from his fights and sieges himself commands the army and leaves me here in stamboul to exert a power that's useless what base employment osman for a vizier but i have used my time to worthier purpose and terrible surprises have prepared him soon will the news thereof make his ears tingle what have you done i hope that bajazet to-day will mount the throne with him roxana roxana my good lord whom amurath chose as fairest of that fair array which filled his court from europe and from asia gathered in countless numbers who alone has fixed the sultan's heart they say whom he has named sultana though no son she yet has borne him ay more dear osmond he has willed that she should in his absence wield supreme command you know the rigour that our sultans practise brothers are seldom suffered to enjoy the dangerous honour of their royal rank related to their own by ties too near the brainless ibrahim from peril free needs not to curse his birth perpetual childhood secures his safety he in life or death alike contemned is left to those who deign to feed him with the other tis not so of amurath's jealous fear a worthier object which every moment threatens his destruction for bajazet has ever scorned to live in slothful ease like other sultan's sons war was his favourite pastime from his boyhood and practice under me has made him perfect have you not seen him charge where foes were thickest with courage that bewitched each soldier's heart 
and stained with carnage reap the rare delight which valor's earliest triumph brings to youth but cruel amurath spite of jealous fears dared not before he had a son to make succession sure wreak upon bajazet his vengeance cutting short the royal stock so for a time was amurath's rage disarmed and bajazet left prisoner in the palace he went and willed that faithful to his hatred holding his brother's life at her disposal roxana at the slightest breath of rumour the least suspicion given no reason else should slay him i left here justly incensed soon turned my wishes to the brother's side hiding my purpose to the young sultana i showed how amurath's return was doubtful the murmurs of the camp wars fickle fortunes praised bajazet and made her pity him dwelt on his charms so jealously concealed so near her eyes yet never seen by her in short so well i worked upon roxana that she was all impatient to behold him but could they frustrate keen-eyed vigilance and overstep the barriers placed between them you may perhaps remember how the tidings false as they proved of amurath's death were spread in feigned alarm roxana heard the rumour and with loud cries of grief strove to confirm it trusting the witness of those tears her slaves trembled and those who guarded bajazet in their perplexity by bribes corrupted relaxed their watchful care when the sultana found means to see the prince and in his ear whispered the secret order she was charged with no churl was bajazet and when he saw that safety lay in pleasing her full soon he pleased her well to aid him all conspired her kindly care their mutual understanding based on the secret shared sighs all the sweeter for being stolen silence that provoked wishes they dared not utter fears and danger common to both united them together whilst those whose eyes should have observed them closely failed to resume the duty once neglected what did roxana from the first make known her heart to them and to their eyes reveal her flame they know it not until to-day on their intrigue has adelaide bestowed the shelter of her name the niece you know of amurath's sire who with his children shared his fondness and with them her childhood passed she as it seemed his tender vows received but only to convey them to roxana the willing instrument to aid their passion and to secure my countenance dear osmond both have agreed that adelaide shall be my bride you love her then wouldst have me learn now at my age the worthless lore of love and shall a heart that years of toil have hardened blindly submit to follow vain delights nay she attracts my gaze with other charms i love in her the blood of royal sires through this alliance to the throne brought near by bajazet i thus secure a shield to guard myself against him some offence is sure to rise for scarcely has vizier been chosen ere the sultan fears his creature and greed or envy soon affects his ruin to-day he honours me and courts my favour the risks he runs incline his heart toward me but established on the throne this bajazet perchance will throw aside a useless friend and if my faithful service be forgotten the day may come when he will dare to doom me to death i say no more but tis my purpose to keep him waiting for my head full long i know the duty that i owe my masters but tis for slaves to humour their caprices nor am i so besotted as to lick the hand that strikes me thus it comes to pass that i within these walls have free admittance and with mine eyes may look upon roxana at first she listened to my voice herself unseen and feared to break the rigid laws that guard the harem but those irksome scruples our converse hampering ere long were banished she has herself chosen this nook remote where eyes may hearts discover unrestrained a slave conducts me by a secret passage but here she comes with her beloved atalide stay 
and be ready, should their need arise, to ratify the statement I shall make her. Scene 2. Roxana, Atilde, Achmet, Osman, Fatima, Sarah. Truth, lady, has confirmed the voice of rumor. Osman has seen the sultan and the army. Proud Amrath is ever ill at ease, and all hearts ever turn to Bajazet. With one consent they call him to the throne. The Persian host, meanwhile, to Babylon were marching, and the rival camp will soon meet neath their walls to try their chance at battle, which must decide, they say, our destinies. And, counting up the days of Osman's journey, heaven has already settled the event, and Amarath triumphs now, or flies defeated. Let us break silence, and declare ourselves, from this day forth shutting our gates against him, nor wait to learn the issue of the conflict, but hasten to anticipate the tidings. If he has lost, what fear you? If he has won, then are the promptest measures the most safe. Delay too long and failure must attend our efforts to seduce a people ready to welcome home their sovereign. I have gained the expounders of our sacred law, intriguing in secret. Well I know religion's power to turn the multitude this way or that. Let Bajazet go forth beyond the walls, and cease to be a prisoner in this palace. This fateful standard in his name display, our wanted signal when the state's in danger. The people, in his favor prepossessed, know that his virtue is his only crime. Besides, a vague report that I have fostered has spread alarm, and made them think the sultan disdains them, and is minded to remove his presence and his throne far from Byzantium. Let us declare what danger overhangs his brother's head, and show the cruel order addressed to you. Let Bajazet assert his claim and mount the throne with courage worthy of royalty. Enough. I will maintain all I have promised. Go, brave Ahmed, gather our friends, their feelings sound. Then bring report of all, and you shall find my answer ready. I will see Bajazet. Nought can I say till of his heart assured as one with mine. Go and return. Scene 3. Roxana, Atalid, Fatima, Sarah. At length, fair Atalide, must Bajazet decide my destiny. Now for the last time I will question him, and learn if I am loved. Can you yet doubt it? Hasten, dear lady, to complete your work. Did you not hear what Ahmed said to urge you? Is Bajazet beloved? Think that tomorrow his liberty and life may be no longer in your control. Perchance this very moment the Sultan comes in fury to destroy him. Why is it that you doubt his heart today? Will you be surety, e'en as you have been his advocate? The care he takes to please you, all you have done, all you can do for him, his danger and his homage to your charms, do not all these assure you of his love? Doubt not, your kindness lives in his remembrance. Ah, oh, it would give me peace could I believe it. But why then speaks he not my fears to banish, as I am told by others that he feels? Relying on your words, full twenty times have I enjoyed a foretaste of his heart's emotion, and in my desire to prove his passion true, conferred with him in secret. My eagerness may make me hard to please, but, to cut short a long and tedious story, I found but little of that amorous ardour which flattering lips had led me to expect. In short, if I to him give life and empire, I must have pledges that I cannot doubt. How do you then propose to test his passion? That if he loves, he should ere nightfall wed me. Wed you? Good heavens, you surely cannot mean it. I know tis not the custom of our sultans, who in their pride stoop not to such constraints, nor hold the laws of marriage made for them. Mid all the fair who vie for their caresses, they sometimes deign to choose a favoured mistress, but still a slave, with no security but beauty's charms, she shares her master's couch, and without shaking off the servile yoke, must bear a son ere she be named sultana. Like none before him, Amarath has willed this honour to bestow for love alone. 
mine is the title mine the power as well and in my hands his brother's life he left but in his ardour amurath ne'er promised prospect of marriage other gifts to crown and i whose sole ambition was for this have all his other benefits forgotten yet what avails it to excuse my conduct tis bajazet that from my memory wipes the past more happy spite of his misfortunes than amurath for he has learned to please me perhaps without the wish guards women vizier all have been bribed for him and in my heart he reigns supreme thanks to my love right well i use the power his brother gave me o'er him his feet have all but reached the sultan's throne there needs but one step more for that i wait in spite of all my love if he to-day refuses to be bound to me by marriage and dares to plead an odious privilege if he for me who have done all for him will not do all i ask that very moment regardless of my love and of my ruin i give him up and let the wretch return to that unhappy plight in which i found him this is the issue bajazet must settle his weal or woe depends upon his answer i do not wish that you to-day should lend your voice to serve as my interpreter nay his own mouth and countenance before me shall all his heart reveal and leave no shade of doubt brought hither secretly must he all unprepared before mine eyes appear farewell this meeting o'er you shall know all scene four atalid sarah zara tis done and atalid is lost you i foresee already what must come the only hope i have lies in despair but why so madam have you not just heard the fatal purpose in roxana's mind to what conditions she will bind him down the prince she says shall marry her or die if he submit what will become of me what will become of him if he refuse i understand your grief but to be frank your love should long ago have augured this ah zara is love ever dowered with prudence all seemed to fit so well with my desires roxana blindly on my word relying believed the heart of bajazet her own all that concerned him to my care confided spoke by my mouth and saw him with mine eyes and close at hand i deemed the happy moment which thanks to her should crown my lover's triumph heaven has pronounced against my cherished scheme what more my zara should i then have done ought i to have opposed roxana's error and lost my lover to enlighten her ere in her heart that passion had been planted i loved him well assured of being beloved e'en from our earliest years you will remember how ties more tender reinforced the bond of kindred blood reared at his mother's lap with him i learned to favour bajazet above his brother she with joy approved our fondness and though parted when she died in absence still we held each other dear and nursed in silence a perennial passion since then roxana's eyes have seen the prince and unsuspicious of my feelings told to me what love the sight of him inspired with eager joy she stretched her hand to help him as grateful as surprised did bajazet return her kindness how could he do less but love too readily believes its wishes roxana with his courtesy contented led us both on to feed ill-founded hopes and leave her to enjoy her sweet delusion i must however own my weakness zara a jealous feeling would not be suppressed roxana loading him with benefits supposed an empire to my feeble charms her constant care forbade him to forget her she held before his eyes a dazzling prospect while i what can i do for him my heart uttered itself in sighs and sighs repeated heaven only knows how many tears i shed but bajazet at last dispelled my fears i wept no more and till to-day have urged him to act a part and made myself his mouthpiece 
alas tis over now roxana scorned will soon be disabused of her mistake for bajazet can hide the truth no longer i know his virtue quick to take alarm at falsehood and i ever gave his words a sense too tender trembling thus to use deceit and now exposure means destruction would that my rival's voice through mine might speak as erst or that at least i might have warned him what to expect but zara i can wait his coming and by word or look prepare him rather than perish let him marry her for die he must if so roxana wills ay he will rush on ruin stay poor fool your lover may be trusted never fear that he will court destruction for your sake it well may be that bajazet's desire to save his life may e'en outrun your wishes why let imaginary ills overwhelm you and ever meet affliction ere it comes you cannot doubt it bajazet adores you calm your emotion or at least conceal it let not your tears betray the love between you the hand that saved him will preserve him still if but encouraged in her self-delusion roxana never knows she has a rival come and elsewhere recover self-possession then learn the prosperous issue of their meeting well zara let us go and thou just heaven if punishment await misguided lovers and this deception merit condemnation on me then he more guilty Bent thy wrath. End of Act One. Act Two of Bajaze by Jean Racine. Translated by Robert Bruce Boswell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, Bajazet, Roxana. At length, dear prince, the fateful hour is come that heaven has kept in store to grant you freedom. No longer am I bound. This very day can I accomplish what my love has planned. It is not mine to sure an easy triumph, nor place a tranquil sceptre in your hands, but all I can do, as I have promised, I arm your valour against your enemies and from your head remove a threatening danger your own firm courage will achieve the rest osman has seen the army and their hearts are yours and those who represent our law conspire with us ahmed will answer for stamboul and as you know i hold submissive the officers the eunuchs and the crowd of slaves who guard the precincts of the palace long have they bought my favour by their silence their very lives are placed at my disposal start now upon that grand career of glory which i have opened to your high ambition the course that you will run involves no crime thus only may you scape the assassin's hand you will but follow an example set by other sultans who have reigned before you but for a fair beginning let us hasten to seal at once your happiness and mine show to the world that in assisting you to wield the sceptre i have served my husband let marriage with a sacred bond unite us and justify the faith so freely given ah uh, madam what is this that you propose what secret hindrance mars our happiness you needs must know the pride of royal state Spare me the pain of being more explicit. I know that ever since one of your sultans, proving the fury of a barbarous foe, beheld his wife bound to the victor's car, and by all Asia dragged along in triumph, few who succeeded him have deigned to take the name of husband, jealous for their honour, but love to such vain laws disowns obedience and not to quote more humble instances great solomon than whom none of your sires whose conquering arms struck all the earth with dread raised to so high a pitch the turkish power casting on roxalana eyes of love forgot the pride that was his ruling passion and made her share alike his couch and throne 
though to that rank she had no other claim than much adroitness and some little beauty tis true but then compare his matchless might with weakness like my own great solomon held undisputed sway o'er land and sea egypt reduced to yield complete submission rogues that strong rock of ottoman dominion where all her brave defenders found their grave the danube's savage banks forced to obey him the bounds of persian empire far withdrawn the burning sands of africa subdued these hushed all opposition to his will but what am i dependent on the people and on the troops indebted to misfortune for all my fame while doubtful yet of empire prescribed and threatened shall i those offend to whom i sue will they believe our dangers and troubles true seeing us steeped in pleasures speak not to me of solomon but think rather of hapless othman's recent murder the janissary chiefs in their revolt seeking fair pretext for their bloody schemes deemed themselves authorized to take his life for marrying as you would have me do the time may come when in their hearts established i may with safety dare to act more boldly we must not be too hasty deign to place me firmly upon the throne then will i show my gratitude I see my own imprudence, and recognize your admirable foresight. Not the least danger can escape your notice to which my too impatient love might lead. You fear to face dishonor thence resulting, and since you tell me so, I must believe it. But have you thought, if marriage bind us not together, what worse perils you incur? How, without me, your way is hedged around you, and it behooves you most to win my favour? That it is I who hold the palace gates, who can for you unlock them, or for ever shut them against you? That your life is mine, that on my love your very breath depends, and, had you lacked this love which you reject, that you would, in a word, be now no more? Yes, I owe all to you, and I had reason to think the only glory that you sought was to behold the triumph of my cause and hear me pay you my acknowledgment. I feel the obligation and confess it. Respectful homage ever shall confirm it. The life that you have given is at your service, but would you still— Nay, I wish nothing more. With forced excuses trouble me no longer. I see how far your thoughts from mine are parted ungrateful as you are i will not urge compliance farther to that abject state return from which i saved you what assurance is wanting yet of this indifference my ardour meets from him no warm response what place has love in all his calculations ah i can see your schemes do what i may you think i've risked too much to throw you over but i am bound to you by bands too strong for me to part my interests from yours but sure i am your brother still is kind you know he loves me and despite his wrath i can appease him with a traitor's blood to justify myself your death suffices and i will see to it this very moment yet hear me bajazet i feel i love you you must not let me go why court destruction still doth the way lie open to repentance drive not a frenzied lover to despair but if one word escape me you are lost tis in your hands and you can take it from me it may be that my death serving your wishes and winning amrith's pardon may restore you the place that in his heart you held before his heart say you e'en were it amorath's wish and hope were lost of reigning in your own a sweet delusion long and fondly cherished think you that i could entertain such thoughts or live henceforth unless i live for you lo in your cruel hands myself have placed arms to destroy so weak a wretch as i enjoy your triumph all the proud disdain that i assume just now i own it false my only happiness on you depends your death will be the signal for my own sad fruit of all my care to save your life at last i hear you sigh and see you troubled come hide it not ah would that i could speak what is it that i hear what say you sir <laughs> you have secrets then i may not learn your feelings are too sacred to be shown to such as i 
Madam, tis yours once more to make your choice. Open for me to empire a lawful road, or slay me. I am ready. This is too much. You shall be satisfied. Ho, guards there, enter. Scene two. Bazerge, Roxana, Ahmet. Ahmet, all is over. You may return, for I have naught to tell you, save that I bow to Amarath's sovereign sway. Go, let the palace gates henceforth be locked, and all be ordered as it was aforetime. Scene three. Bajeze Ahmet. Friends, what is this I hear with strange surprise? What will become of you, and what of me? Whence comes this change, and whom am I to blame? Good heavens! Tis only right that you should know. Roxana is offended, burns for vengeance, our mutual compact is forever broken. Vizier, I warn you, to yourself take heed. Act as seems best, and count no more on me. What? You and yours some place of refuge seek. My friendship can afford you naught but perils. I hoped one day to have repaid you better, but must not think it more. The bubbles burst. What is this rock on which your hopes are wrecked? Just now I left all peaceful in the palace. What is this madness that has seized your minds? She wishes me to wed her, Ahmet. Well, tis true that wish accords not with the custom that sultans use. But is that rule so strict that you should lose your life to follow it? What law more sacred than to save yourself, to snatch from certain death the royal blood of Othman that in you alone survives? Nay, the last drop would be too dearly purchased were it to be preserved by cowardice. Why let your mind conceive so dark a picture? Was Solomon's renown tarnished by marriage? Yet Solomon himself was never menaced by dangers so apparent as yourself. These very dangers make the chief disgrace of such a marriage, prompted by mere love of life. It was not so with Solomon. His slave found favor in her master's eyes. No dire necessity imposed its yoke, but freely did he offer heart and hand. And yet you love her? Ahmed, tis enough. Less than you think I murmur at my fate. Must I not deem dishonor worse than death, which in your steps I followed while a youth, and learned to calmly face when for no fault I lay in prison? Amareth to my eyes has many a time the headsman's axe presented. She will but end a life of ceaseless trouble. Alas, and if with some regret I quit it, forgive me, Achmet. I have cause to pity hearts that, with kind attachment, ill-rewarded, made me the object of their every thought. You only are to blame, Prince, if we perish. Speak but a word, and you can save us all. All the brave Janissaries here remaining, the holy ministers of our religion, and those who, honored for their good example, direct the currents of the public favor wait to conduct you to the sacred gate through which new sultans make their first appearance. If then so dear they hold me, my brave Ahmet, let them protect me from Roxana's power. Ay, and, if need be, break into the palace, and with their valiant aid effect my rescue. I would go forth covered with wounds and blood sooner than loaded with that odious name her husband. In the tumult and confusion despair may arm me in my own defense and fighting boldly, I may give you time to reach my side and prove your loyalty. The utmost expedition well might fail to thwart Roxana's violent revenge. Then what would all such fiery zeal have done save to involve your friends in fruitless guilt? Promise, and when no longer danger threatens, tis yours to give your word what weight you will. This to me, Ahmet. Never blush. The sons of Othman are not bound to keep their oaths like common slaves. Take counsel of those heroes who made their swords the measure of their rights, as of their faith, and march to victories world-wide, state policy their only law. Half of this sacred empire rests on pledges lavishly given, sparingly fulfilled. Pardon my warmth. Yes, I am well aware how far they pushed the interest of the state. But these same heroes freely spent their blood and scorned to purchase life by perfidy. Oh, doubtless courage, but too firm and faithful, which wins my admiration, 
though it end in ruin. Must a scruple then destroy? But some good angel sends us Adelaide. Scene 4. Bajazé, Atelide Achmet. Ah, madam, come, unite your prayers with mine, for he is lost. Tis that which brings me here, but leave us, Ahmed. Bent on his destruction, Roxana means to shut the palace gates. In any case, be within easy call. There may be reason for a quick return. Scene 5. Bajazé, Atalib. Now is the moment come when I must leave you. Heaven has our common stratagem confounded. No weapon can ward off its latest blow. I should have died, or have resigned your love. Vainly have we contrived to mask our feelings, and nothing gained but to defer my death. I told you how it would be, but to your wish consented, and postponed your grief as long as might be. In return, fair Adelaide, obey me now. Avoid Roxana's presence. Hide from her eyes the tears that would betray you, and let us part. Delay is dangerous. No, Prince. Your kindness to a hapless maid has long enough resisted fate's decrees. Your wish to spare me costs you far too dear. You must submit, leave me, and mount the throne. Leave you? Tis my desire, and well considered. True it is that a thousand jealous thoughts have surged within me, and I could not bear that Bajazet should live, yet not be mine. And often as I pictured to myself the hateful triumph of my happy rival, your death appeared, pardon a lover's frenzy, less fraught with anguish to my tortured heart. But then there was not shown to my sad eyes the fatal stroke ready to fall. I saw not, as now I see, my Bajazet prepared to bid his Atalie the last farewell. I know, dear prince, too well with what firm courage you go to meet the dread approach of death, how with your heart's last sighs you fain would prove your faithfulness to me. But have compassion upon a soul more timid than your own, temper your woes to Atalie's endurance, nor thus expose me to the liveliest sorrow that ever dried the fount of lover's eyes. What will be your future if today you see me celebrate this fatal marriage? My future need be no concern to you. I shall perhaps obey my destiny and find some flattering balm to ease my sorrow. Soothed with this thought, e'en in the midst of tears, you were resolved to lose your life for me, and live because I would not let you die. No, you will never see that cruel sight. The more you bid me be untrue to you, the more I see how truly you deserve to fail in gaining what you desire. What, shall this tender love, that in our childhood was born, and grew in silence with our growth, your tears that only I could wipe away, my frequent oaths that I would never forsake you, shall all these end in basest perfidy? And whom wouldst have me marry? I will tell you, a slave who thinks of no one but herself, who shows me instruments of death made ready, and offers me her hand or execution. Whilst Adelaide, touched by my present dangers, and worthy of the sires from whom she springs, would sacrifice herself, her love, and all. Ha! Huh, let the jealous sultan have my head. Its ransom were too costly. Generous prince, you yet may live without betraying me. Speak. If I can, I'm willing to obey you. Roxana loves you, and despite your wrath, if you, my lord, would take more pains to please her, letting your amorous sighs instill the hope of one day... Say no more, I can't consent. You must not fancy cowardly despair has made me so faint-hearted that I dread the cares of royal power that might be mine, and would avoid them by untimely death. Rash counsels are to me but too congenial. The glories of my race, my soul possessing and making ease repugnant, kindled hopes of being numbered with that line of heroes. But though ambition fiercely burns within me, I cannot longer dupe a lover's trust. Vain would it be for me to promise it, my lips and eyes, foes to such craven falsehoods, when I would be most anxious to beguile her, would all the tumult of my mind betray. With anger she would see my sighs were forced from an unwilling breast, as cold as ice to her. Heaven knows how oft I had disclosed the truth were mine own life alone at stake, 
and no fear present that her jealousy might but too easily extend to you. And shall I promise what my heart belies, acting the perjured villain to abuse? Ah, if your judgment were not warped by love, far from enjoining this base subterfuge, you would be surely first to blush thereat. But lest you press me further to forget the claims of honour, I will find Roxana, and leave you, madam. Nay, I quit you not. Come, cruel prince, I will conduct you thither, and tell our secret to her ears myself. Since my distracted lover scorns my tears, and fain would die before my very eyes, Roxana shall at least in death unite us. My blood will better quench her rage than yours, and to your startled eyes I will present the rueful sight you would prepare for me. Heavens, what is this? Can you imagine, sir, you hold your honour dearer than is mine to me? Believe me while I made you speak, my shame a hundred times all but compelled disclosure, but I saw your death too nigh. Why, since my own must follow, why refuse to do for me what I dared do for you? One word a little kinder may suffice. Perchance Roxana in her heart forgives you. She grants you, as you see, time for repentance. Nor did she, quitting you, dispatch the vizier, nor send her guards to seize you in my presence. Her tears have shown me how her tender feelings with rage contend, imploring me to aid her. She waits to catch at hope, however faint, to drop the arms of vengeance from her hand. Go to her, prince, and save your life and mine. Well, be it so, but how shall I accost her? Nay, ask not me to choose befitting words. Heaven will supply them as occasion serves. Go, I must not be present at your meeting. Your eyes or mine would tell what trouble ails us. Go. Once again I dare not be a witness. Say all that may be needful, sir, to save you. End of Act Two Act Three of Bajazé by Jean Racine Translated by Robert Bruce Boswell This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Three, Scene One, Atelid Zara. Is it true, then, Zara? Is his pardon sealed? Madam, as I have said, a slave who ran with eager steps to do Roxana's pleasure admitted Ahmed at the palace gates. To me they spoke not but the vizier's joy marked on his face better than any words that this a happy change recalls him hither and that he comes to sign a lasting peace no doubt roxana leans to milder measures thus pleasure on all sides eludes my grasp and leaving me forsaken follows them zara i have done my duty nor repent it why madam what new trouble now alarms you have you not heard, my Zara, by what charm, or rather should I say, but what a compact the prince has brought about a change so sudden? Roxana's fury seemed inflexible. Has she some pledge that vouches for his heart? Speak. Does he wed her? I know not of that, but if he thus alone could save himself, and acts as you yourself have bidden him, if, in a word, he weds her weds her zara what do you then regret those generous words which your unselfish care for him dictated no no it is but right that he should do it two jealous feelings hush your clamorous voice wedding roxana bajazet obeys me respect the better nature that has quelled you nor with its noble counsels mingle yours Paint not my prince clasped in another's arms, but let me picture him without regret, set on the throne my love has made him mount. I am myself again, and firm as ever. It was his love, dear Zara, that I wished. He loves me, and this hope at least consoles me, that worthy of my lover I shall die. Die? What inspires so terrible a purpose? 
I have resigned my lover, does the rest surprise you? Can a death that ends these tears be counted in the number of my woes? Enough for me that Bajazet shall live. I wished it, wish it still, cost what it may. Be it joy or grief, I care not to inquire. I love him well enough to give him up. But he must know that, if I can for him make sacrifice so great, tending his life with anxious effort, yet I love too well to wish to be the witness of his bridal. Let us go learn. Pray calm yourself, dear madam. The vizier comes to bring you news of all. Scene 2. Atalid Ahmed Zara. At last, our lovers have been reconciled and a fair breeze now wafts us into port. The wrath of the sultana is disarmed. She has declared to me her latest wishes. And while the dreadful standard of the prophet she to the city's startled sight displays, and Bajazet prepares my steps to follow, my task is to explain to all the people what means this signal, rouse a just alarm, and the new sultan publicly proclaim. Meanwhile, Permit me to remind you, madam, what Garadun has been promised to my zeal. Do not expect from me such rapturous sighs as I have witnessed in those ardent lovers. But if respect more worthy of my years, the careful homage of a heart devoted to one so near in blood to royalty, can... Time may teach me what your merits claim, and you in time may also learn to know me. But tell me now... What transports did you witness? Can you not fancy, madam, the soft sighs of two young lovers mutually enamoured? Nay, tis a marvel fills me with surprise. What price exacts Roxana for this pardon? Does he consent to wed her? Yes, I think so. I'll tell you all I saw with mine own eyes. Twas with amazement at their angry quarrel exclaiming against lovers, love, and fortune. Aye, and in blank despair I left this palace, lading a vessel ready in the harbour, with treasure rescued from my ruined fortunes. I thought to sail to some far distant land, when, full of this sad purpose, I was summoned hither once more. Hope to my feet gave wings, and at my voice the palace doors flew open. A female slave my joyful eyes beheld, who, all in silence, led me to a chamber where, with attentive ear, Roxana hearkened to Bajazet, while all around was stillness. Resisting my impatience, and respecting their secret conference, I stood aloof, and, motionless, long watched what passed between them. At last, with eyes that all her soul betrayed, the pressure of her hand pledged her affection, and he, with eloquent and amorous gaze, assured her of his passion in his turn. Alas! Then both of them perceived my presence. Here, said she, see your sovereign, yours and mine. Now, to your hands, brave Achmet, I can sign him. Go, and for him make ready regal pomp. Let loyal crowds await him in the mosque. Soon shall the palace set you the example. Then, at the feet of Bajazet, I fell, and straightway from their presence disappeared, only too happy, on my way, to bring you true tidings of their reconciliation, and offer you my most respectful homage. I go to speed my task, his coronation. Scene 3. Atelid Sarah. Let us withdraw, and not disturb their joy. Madam, believe— Why flatter me with falsehoods? How can I face a sight so terrible? Fain would they wed forthwith. My fate is settled, for welcome to Roxana is the love he vows. But why complain? T'was I that wished it. And yet would you have thought this possible, when no self-sacrifice seemed great enough to prove his faith to me, and he refused the least concession to Roxana's wishes, when with a secret pleasure I perceived how all my tears were powerless to move him. Would you have deemed his heart, that seemed so constant, could e'er have found such eloquence to woo her? Ah, 
but too ready may that heart have been to echo all his lips have learned to utter perchance new graces in her eyes appeared responsive to more tender looks from him she will have touched him with her tale of woe in generous hearts such love breeds sympathy nor least when tears can purchase power supreme alas what reasons urge him to forget me but madam their success is still uncertain be patient no what boots it to be blind i have no wish to swell my tide of trouble i know where lies for him the path of safety and when my tears recalled him to roxana i did not mean that he should disobey me but with his fond farewell still in mine ears after such tender transports of affliction his joy methinks need not have been expressed with such conspicuous warmth as ahmed witnessed judge for yourself if i have cause to murmur why am i only banished from their counsels am i concerned so little in the fate of bajazet why lingers he so long away from me does not his heart reproach him that thus he shrinks from meeting Atalid? But I will spare him his uneasiness. He ne'er shall see me more. Madam, he comes. Scene 4. Bajeze, Atalid, Zara. Your bidding has been done, and I have spoken. My life no longer, madam, is in danger, and happy should I be if truth and honor reproached me not for having purchased safety by means unjust if mine own heart could pardon my fault as readily as does Roxana. But I at last am free. My hand is armed, and I may now meet my unnatural brother. No more dependent on your skill, contriving secret intrigues, here plotting to seduce his mistress's heart, but following him afar to other climes, more nobly in fair fight disputing the affections of his people, and making fame for valor judge between us. But why is this? I see you weeping. No, sir, I do not grudge you your new happiness. Heaven's justice owed you this strange turn of fortune. You know if e'er your welfare I opposed, your eyes are witnesses how all my life your perils have engrossed my every care. And since my death alone can seal your safety, it is without regret for you I die. True it is that, had heaven vouchsafed to hear my prayers, I might have made a happier end. My rival would no less have been your bride, and found you faithful to the marriage tie. But though her husband, you would have withheld those tokens of true love so freely lavished. Less fervour would have satisfied Roxana, and I, in dying, this sweet thought have cherished, that, only yielding to my strict injunction, you gave your hand to her, your heart to me. Still, still mine own e'en in the world of shades, that I was leaving you, but not your love. Why talk you thus, madam, of love and marriage? What in the name of heaven affords you ground for speech like this? What falsehood has deceived you? I love Roxana? I devote my life to her? Oh, no, and far from thinking so, can you believe my tongue could even say it? But, as it happened, there was need of neither. Roxana was as credulous as ever, and whether she at once thought my return a certain token of my true affection, or time too precious for prolonged resistance, scarce had I said a few unheeded words, when with a flood of tears she cut me short and placing in my hands her life and fortune, without reserve trusting my gratitude, seemed satisfied that I intended marriage. I, blushing to impose upon her faith, unworthy of a love so generous, showed my confusion, but she fondly deemed it due to the warmth of passion, while I felt that I was basely cruel and unjust. Believe me, I had need that trying moment to call to mind all my concern for you in order to preserve perfidious silence unbroken to the end. Now, when I come after such conflicts seeking consolation against remorse, I find you in displeasure, charging my harassed conscience with your death. Alas, I see too well, e'en at this moment all that I say has little force to move you. Madam, twere well to end what pains us both. 
why should we vainly vex each other longer? Roxana is not far to seek. Permit me to tell the truth. More gladly will I go to disabuse her than I went so often forcing myself to play the hypocrite. Ah, uh, here she comes. Heaven save him from his rashness. Prince, if you love me, do not undeceive her. Scene 5. Roxana, Bajeze, Atelide, Sarah. Come, Bajeze, tis time to show yourself that all the court may recognize its master, all that these walls contain, many a number gathered by my command, await my wishes. My slaves, the rest will follow where they lead, are the first subjects that my love allots you. This sudden change from wrath to milder mood may well surprise you, madam, for, but now, determined to take vengeance on a traitor, I swore he should not see another day. Yet almost ere he spoke, my heart relented. T'was love imposed that oath, and love revokes it. Reading deep passion in his wild distraction, his pardon I pronounced, and trust his promise. Yes, I have promised, and my word is pledged ne'er to forget all that to you I owe. Have I not sworn that constant care and kindness shall duly pay my debt of gratitude? If on these terms your favor I may claim, I go to wait the harvest of your bounty. Scene 6. Roxana, Atelide, Zara. Heavens! What amazement strikes me at this moment! Is it a dream? And have mine eyes deceived me? What mean these frigid words, this somber greeting which seems to cancel all that passed between us? What hope does he imagine mine, for which I banished my resentment and restored him to favour? He, methought, swore that his heart would own me mistress to his dying day. Does he repent already of the peace that we had signed? Was I just now deluded? But was he not conversing with you, madam? What did he say? To me? He loves you always. His life, at least, depends on my belief that it is so. But tell me, pray, when joy should triumph, how can you explain the gloom that settled on his features as he left me? Madam, I saw no cloud upon his brow. Oft has he told me of your gracious kindness, and he just now was full of it. At parting he seemed to me the same as when he entered. But, be that as it may, need it surprise you that, on the eve of such important issues, he should be troubled and some signs escape him of anxious thoughts that on his mind intrude? Such plausible excuses do you credit for skill that pleads on his behalf more fairly than he could do himself. What other cause? Enough. I read your motive, madam, better than you suppose. Leave me for I would be alone a little while. I too am troubled, and anxious cares are mine as well as his, to which I owe a moment's thought in secret. Scene 7. Roxana How must I construe all that I have seen? Are they in league together to deceive me? Wherefore this change, those words, that quick departure? Did I not catch a glance that passed between them? Were they not both struck with embarrassment? Ah, oh, why has heaven doomed me to this affront? Is this the fruit of all my blind affection? So many painful days and sleepless nights, plots and intrigues, treason too deep for pardon? And shall they all turn to a rival's profit? But yet too ready to torment myself, I may too closely scan a passing cloud and take for passion what is mere caprice. Surely he would have carried to the end his wiles, and in full prospect of success he could have feigned at least a moment longer. Love, uncontrolled by reason, quakes at shadows. Let me take courage. Why should Atalide be dreaded as my rival? What has he to thank her for? To which of us today owes he the sceptre? But too well I know love is a tyrant. And if other charms attract, what matter crowns or life itself? Can benefits outweigh the heart's attachment? I need but search mine own. Did gratitude constrain me to his brother when this wretch bewitched me? 
Ah, if other tie were absent, would the idea of marriage so alarm him? He gladly would have seconded my wishes, and not have braved destruction by refusal. Just cause. But someone comes to speak with me. What can she want? Scene 8. Roxana, Fatima. Forgive me this intrusion, but there is come a courier from the army. And though the seaward gate was shut, the guards on bended knees without delay unlocked it. To orders from the sultan to yourself addressed, and strange to say, tis Orkin brings them. Orkin? Yes, he. Of all the sultan's slaves, the one most trusted for his faithful service, blackest of those whom Afric's son has scorched. Madam, he asks impatiently for you. I thought it best to give you timely notice, and, lest you should be taken by surprise, I have detained him in your own apartments. What new disaster comes to overwhelm me? What can his bidding be? What my reply? Doubtless the sultan in his mind protrubed has Bajazet condemned a second time. Without my sanction none will dare to take his life, for all obey me here. But ought I to shield him? Bajazet or Hammerath, which claims allegiance? One I have betrayed, the other may be false to me. Time presses. I must resolve this fatal doubt, nor let the precious moment pass. Love, when most cautious, cannot conceal its secret inclination. I will watch Bajazet and Atalide, then crown the lover, or destroy the traitor. End of Act 3 Act Four of Bajaze by Jean Racine, translated by Robert Bruce Boswell. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Four, Scene One: Atelide Sara. Ah, know you my alarm? How in this palace fierce Orkin's odious features I have seen. I fear his presence at this fatal moment. But tell me, have you seen Prince Bajazet? What said he? Will he hear the voice of reason, and going to Roxana calm suspicion? He may not go again without permission. Such are her orders. She will have him wait. No doubt she would not wish that slave to see him. On finding him, I feigned I had not sought him, gave him your letter, and received his answer. Here, madam, read what tidings it conveys. Atalid reads. Why should thy love bid me accustomed grown to labyrinths of deceit still wander there? Yet shall my life be cherished with due care, since thou hast sworn thereon depends thine own. Yes, I will see Roxana, and will say words to appease her anger, if I may, swearing how grateful I will ever be exact no more for neither death nor thou false promises of love shall make me vow when in my heart i cherish only thee what need of protestations does he think i know not how devotedly he loves me is this the way in which he meets my wishes roxana and not i must be persuaded how am i filled with anxious fears again why did I heed distrustful jealousy reproaching me with blindness? Why give voice to doubts that all his tales were tinged with falsehood? Did not my happiness pass expectation? I was beloved, Roxana well contented. Return, and if you can, see Bajazet once more. His frigid words will never appease her. Let eyes and lips alike swear that he loves her and force her to believe him. Oh, that I might quicken his indifference with my tears, and with the love I feel inspire his tongue. But to new perils I should thus expose him. See, the sultana comes. Ah, hide that letter. Scene 2. Roxana, Atalid, Fatima, Sarah. Roxana to Fatima. This order has been sent me. I must use it to fright her. Atalid to Sarah. 
run try all means to persuade him scene three roxana atalid fatima i have received a message from the army madam have you been told what there has happened i heard a slave came hither from the camp but not i know of anything besides a change of fortune has to amurath brought victory and babylon has fallen what madam osman then was ill informed since his departure was the slave dispatched the war is over fatal news and now to crown disgrace the sultan follows close after his messenger the persian hosts bar not his progress no he marches hither with rapid strides i pity your alarm what you would do must now be quickly finished too late the tide of conquest to oppose ah time abates not his severity see in my hand i hold his last commands and what are they look read them for yourself madam you know the writing and the seal i recognize the cruel sultan's hand she reads while babylon still scorned to own my sway to you express commandment did i send which doubtless you were careful to obey and bajazet ere this has met his end now when proud babylon my yoke must bear that order i confirm if need there be hold you your own life precious take good care that when i come his severed head i see well madam Atalid aside hide your tears poor Atalid. what think you still he seeks his brother's life but he believes him helpless and alone he knows not of your love that shelters him that you and bajazet are one in soul that you would rather die for my part madam i fain would save the prince i cannot hate him but what have you decided to obey obey what choice is left at such a crisis i must and will you then cut short that life which with fond vows to you the prince devoted i must my order is already given oh i am dying she falls and seems lifeless go take her to the nearest chamber watch every look and listen to each word all that may prove a fault of perfidy scene four roxana my rival has at last declared herself on what a broken reed have i relied six months have i been thinking all her care devoted day and night to aid my love while all that time it seems mine eyes have watched with zealous service to promote her own devising means whereby she might obtain many a sweet and secret interview and e'en anticipating her desire oft have i hastened those delightful moments this is not all now must i get to know how far her perfidy has been successful and must but what more is there left to learn is not my woe writ on her countenance cannot i read beneath this wild distress assurance that her lover's heart is hers free from suspicious doubts that harass me the fear she feels is only for his life no matter i will learn the truth she may be trusting like myself false promises i'll lay a trap to catch him unawares but is not this a task vain and unworthy devising means but to torment myself why should i rend the veil that hides his scorn and after all his caution may outwit my utmost skill besides time presses closely i must take action and without delay twere better if i shut mine eyes to all that i have seen nor probe the galling wound i'll try how far he'll go and dare the worst see whether when i've set him on the throne he will betray the love that saved his life and with a dastard's liberality share with my rival all he owes to me shall i not always have it in my power to punish both at need yes i will watch the traitor till my righteous fury finds fit season to surprise the amorous pair 
then the same dagger shall in death unite them. Both will I stab, and after them myself. This is the proper part for me to play. I will seem blind to all. Scene 5. Roxana, Fatima. What have you learned? Is Bajazet indeed in love with her? And do her words reveal their mutual flame? She has not spoken, for her swoon continues, and only long-drawn sighs and feeble moans betoken that she lives, while every moment her breath seems ready to depart forever. Your ladies, emulous to give relief, removed the kerchief from her panting bosom. In mine own eagerness to aid their efforts, I found this letter in its folds concealed, whereon I recognized your lover's writing— and thought it best to bring it straight to you. Give it. Why throbs my heart? What sudden shock freezes my sense, arrests my trembling hand? He may have written nothing to offend my jealousy. He may... See, let me read it. Neither death nor thou false promises of love shall make me vow when in my heart I cherish only thee. Ha! Huh. Have I then found the base treason out? I see the bait with which they thought to catch me. This, then, is his return for all my love, mean wretch, unworthy of the life I left him. Now I can breathe once more. What joy to know the traitor has for once betrayed himself. Free from the pressure of tormenting fears, my rage can calmly study its revenge. Ay, let the monster die. Let him be seized. Go! Bid my mutes prepare his punishment, and to his neck apply the fatal bowstring that ends the heinous guilt of such as he. Run, Fatima, be prompt to serve my wrath. Ah, oh, madam. Well, what is it? May I venture, without displeasing you, so justly wroth, to ask indulgence for a timid voice? Tis true that Bajazet, of life unworthy, deserves to suffer at their cruel hands. But, ingrate as he is, tis amoreth rather than he that should engage your fears to-day. Who knows but that some faithless tongue already may have warned him of your plot, and hearts like his, as you must know full well, when once offended, know not how to pardon. At such a moment the swift stroke of death becomes the dearest token of their love. Ah, oh, with what cruelty and insolence they both made sport of my credulity! How readily, how gladly did I trust them! It was no great victory the traitor gained when he deceived a heart prepared to love him, which feared the thought so much it would not dream of falsehood. From my proud estate I stooped and sought you first when in the lowest depths of misery to change a life disturbed by constant dangers into one of peace and power. But after all my care and kindness you vow that you can never say you love me. But why with vanished dreams let memory stray? You weep, poor fool! Those tears now shed too late were needed rather when a vain desire bred the first fatal thought of seeing him. You weep, and he still bent on treachery thinks how he may ensnare you with his words and keep his life unharmed to please your rival. The wretch shall die. What? Fatima still here? Be gone. But I myself must hasten hence. Like an avenging spirit let him see me, showing at once his brother's fatal sentence and this indisputable proof of treason. You, Fatima, must keep my rival here, and in his dying ear her cries shall sound a last farewell. Let her be well attended. My hatred needs her life, guarded with care. If apprehension of her lover's death so touched her heart that almost she expired, what surfeit of revenge, what strange delight to show him soon a pallid corpse before her! Then will her eyes, while on that sight they gaze, repay me for the pleasures I have lent them. Go, guard her safely, above all, keep silence. I... but who comes to make my vengeance linger? Scene 6. Roxana Ahmed Osman 
What mean you, madam, by this long delay, wasting these precious moments? It has been my care to gather all Stamboul together, whose leaders are assailed by anxious questions. They all, with my adherents, wait the signal you promised me, this movement to explain. How comes it that, neglecting their impatience, the palace keeps meanwhile a gloomy silence? Madam, declare yourself, postpone no longer. You shall be satisfied, it shall be done. There's something in your look and voice severe that seems to contradict such an assurance. Does then your love, all obstacles o'ercome? The traitor Bajazet has lived too long. He? Traitor? I, alike to me and you, we were his dupes. How so? That Atalide, whose hand was a reward of little worth for all that you have dared on his behalf. Well? Read, and, after such an insult, judge, if we should yet defend so foul a traitor. T'were better far to face the just resentment of Amarath, who comes with laurels crowned, leaving a base accomplice to his fate, and soothe the sultan by a prompt submission. Achmet giving her back the letter. Yes, since the wretch dares to insult me thus, I will myself most willingly avenge you. Leave it to me from both of us to clear the stain with which his life has covered ours. Show me the road, and I will run. Nay, Ahmed, be mine the pleasure of confounding him, to see his terror and enjoy his shame. Revenge would lose its sweetness if too swift. I go to make all ready. You, meanwhile, disperse at once the crowds that have assembled. Scene 7. Ahmed Osman. Stay. Tis not time to go away just yet. What? Has your love bereft you of your judgment? Desire for vengeance carries you too far. Will you be witness of the prince's death? What mean you? Are you then so credulous as to suspect me of such foolish anger? You think me jealous? Would to heaven that he had, by his falsehood, injured only me. Why, then, instead of pleading for the prince? Is the sultana in a state to hear me? Do you not see, when I proposed to find him, I meant to share with him success or ruin? Unlucky issue of this tangled plot. Infatuated prince, or rather I, loaded with years and honors, to have placed the labyrinthian clue in hands so young, and left my own frail and uncertain fortune to follow where these thoughtless lovers led. Leave her to wreck her wrath on Bajazet. If he will perish, think of your own safety. Who can reveal your secret schemes, my lord, but friends who may be trusted to keep silence? The prince's death will pacify the sultan? So in her madness may Roxana fancy. But I have keener eyes. Experience of many years has taught me how a monarch both thinks and acts. Three sultans have I served, and seen my fellows drop like falling leaves. Boldness is better than servility, to win and keep the favor of the great, as I have proved full oft. The cringing slave must die when he incurs his master's wrath. Fly, then! Just now that seemed the safest course, but then my plot had not advanced so far. Retreat is harder now than to press on. The lightning's brilliant flash must mark my fall, leaving behind me wreck and desolation which may retard my enemy's pursuit. Why be dumbfounded? Bajazet still lives. Have I not brought him out of sorer straits? Come, let us save him in his own despite, for us, our friends, I, even for Roxana. Did you not see how, eager to protect him, she stayed my arm too ready to avenge her? Little know I of love, but I am sure his shame is what she longs for, not his life. We still have time. Roxana, though despairing, still loves him, Osman, and is gone to see him. What has inspired you to such dauntless daring? We tarry here but at Roxana's pleasure. 
is not this palace full of abject slaves untrained to arms sheltered within these walls from birth but you whose valour amoreth forgets to honour linked by common grievance will you support me to the bitter end to doubt it is to wrong me if you die i will die too a bold and well-armed troop of friends await us at the palace gates roxana thinks the words i spoke sincere brought up within the palace well i know its windings and where bajazet is lodged let us proceed and if i needs must die then let us perish osmond as becomes a vizier such as i am and his friend in the act four act five of bajazet by jean racine translated by robert bruce boswell this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit LibriVox.org. act five scene one Atelide. alas mine eyes search every spot in vain unhappy that i am how have i lost him why did kind heaven allow my fatal love to hang such perils o'er his head to-day and worst of all that this disastrous letter should reach my rival's eyes yes it was here roxana found me and my timid hand concealed the dangerous missive in my bosom while taken by surprise i checked my tears then as with threatening voice she bade me know the sultan's order all my senses left me when i recovered round me stood her ladies who now have vanished from my wandering eyes ah cruel were the hands that succoured me their help was purchased at too dear a price for they conveyed this letter to roxana what horrid purpose now her mind engrosses who will be first the victim of her vengeance what blood will satisfy her keen resentment ah bajazet is dead or dies this moment and i meanwhile am kept a prisoner here but the door opens i shall learn his fate scene two roxana atalid fatima guards roxana to atalid withdraw forgive the feelings which overcome me withdraw i tell you answer not a word guards keep her close scene three roxana fatima yes fatima all's ready black orkin and the mutes await their victim yet still like hound at leash i hold his fate restrained but once let loose it slays its quarry say is he coming close upon my footsteps a slave conducts him unsuspicious seems he of imminent disgrace for eagerly to seek you madam did he leave his chamber poor feeble soul courting thine own deception canst thou again suffer the traitor's presence dost think that words of thine by love or fear may move him e'en should he submit canst thou forgive should vengeance linger any longer have not his wrongs yet overflowed thy cup waste no more efforts on a heart of stone but let the caitiff perish ah he comes scene four bajazet roxana i will not weary you with vain reproaches the moments are too precious to be wasted in words and i should say but what you knew your very life bears witness to my care for you and if my love meets no response i murmur not thereat though sooth to say this love of mine perchance and all my kindness might well add something to my feeble charms but when in place of gratitude i find that you have met such love and confidence with feigned affection and prolonged deceit your baseness fills me with astonishment mine madam yours i say will you not still disown the scorn you fancy undetected why should you not continue to disguise with hues of falsehood love that is another's and swear to me with that perfidious tongue all that you feel for her your atelide 
For Adelaide? Good heavens. Who then has told you? Stop, traitor, look, and then deny you wrote it. Bajaze, after looking at the letter. I say no more. This letter's frank avowal contains the revelation of a love crossed by disaster. Now you know a secret ready to leap to light, and all but owned a thousand times already. Yes, I love, and ere your flame had shown itself to blast my hopes, this passion, formed in infancy, had steeled my heart against all other charms. If I may dare to tell you so, your love thought that by lavish kindness it might win me, and your own heart interpreted my feelings. I knew your error, but what could I do? I saw it was one you would be loath to part with. Oft have ambitious hearts like mine been tempted by offers of a throne. The gift allured me. I hesitated not, but gladly seized the opportunity of gaining freedom. And all the more that to decline meant death, that you yourself pressed me with eagerness, and nothing feared so much as my refusal that would moreover have involved your ruin. For, after having dared to speak with me, your greatest danger lay in drawing back. Yet, I would call your own complaints to witness. Did I beguile you with false promises? Recall how many times you reproached me with silence that betrayed my inward trouble. The nearer to the crown you held before me, the more I blamed myself and felt abashed. The heaven that heard me knows what vows sincere I offered, which would surely have been kept had but their power been equal to my hopes and to my gratitude free scope afforded. I, with such honors and such dignities, would have repaid your kindness and contented your pride, that even you, perhaps... And how could you do aught to please me, keeping back your heart? What vows of yours could profit me? Have you forgotten who and what I am? That, mistress here, your life is in my power? That to my guidance Amarath has trusted the helm of state, made me sultana, me the sovereign of his heart, though yours disowns allegiance? On this pinnacle of glory already set, how could you lift me higher? A tempting lot, forsooth, to linger here, rejected by a wretch whom I had crowned, degraded from my proper rank, and made, at best, the foremost of my rival slaves. Enough of idle words, they weary me. For the last time, say, will you live and reign? Here is the Sultan's order. Yet can I still save you, but be quick. Speak. What is it that I must do? Come with me instantly, and see my rival die, strangled by mutes. Then, from a love released fatal to greatness, pledge me your faith, and time will do the rest. This is the price that you must pay for pardon. Should I consent, t'would be to wreak revenge on you, to make my horror and my scorn brand you with infamy before the world. But fury surely makes me mad that thus I wet your rage against poor Adelaide. If I am guilty, she is no accomplice. If you are wronged, no part had she therein. Unmoved by selfish jealousy, she urged that I should give both heart and hand to you. Let not my fault stain her transcendent virtue. Pour out your wrath, but temper it with justice. Without delay, perform the Sultan's orders. But let my death at least be free from hatred. Not her has Amrith's sentence doomed with me. Then spare a life unfortunate enough. Add this last favor to so many others, and if you ever held me dear, depart! Scene 5. Roxana, Fatima Never again shalt thou behold me, traitor. Thou marchest to the tomb that is thy due. Hatalid craves your ear a moment, madam, and fain would do obeisance at your feet. She wishes to confide to you a secret that touches you more nearly than herself. Yes, let her come. You, follow Bajazet, and when the time comes, tell me of his fate. Scene 6. Roxana Altalib I come not now to play the hypocrite. Too long have I abused your goodness, madam. I blush to feel that I deserve your hatred, and prostrate at your feet confess my crime. Yes, madam, it is true, I have deceived you. 
my own heart's passion all my care engrossed at sight of bajazet you were forgotten and every word i spoke betrayed my trust i loved him from a child and ever since to keep him mine has been my constant study his royal mother blind to fate's decree favoured our union and prepared his ruin you loved him later better far for both if you had known my heart or hiding yours had with less confidence reposed on mine i do not wrong myself to justify the prince i swear by heaven that sees my shame by those great ancestors from whom i spring who kneel with me thus at your feet and plead for their own blood the purest they have left with time you would have won the love you sought and bajazet been vanquished by your charms had not my jealousy been prompt to urge all that might hold him back nought i neglected piteous complaints or tears or indignation and bade him reverence his mother's ashes this very day the climax of misfortune reproaching him with having raised your hopes and laying to his charge my death i strove with earnest importunity to wrest a pledge that given at last against his will has plunged him into ruin with myself but why should you be weary of your kindness or dwell upon past coldness it was i who forced him to untie the knot which soon will bind your hearts once more when i am gone and yet however my crime may merit death do not yourself inflict just punishment nor show roxana to his frenzied eyes red with the blood of atalid but spare his tender heart so violent a shock you need not fear to leave me to my fate the stroke of death will suffer no delay thereby nor fail your triumph to secure crown him and in a hero's love rejoice may death be my concern his life be yours go madam go and ere you can return you shall not need to fear a rival more i have no claim to sacrifice so great i judge myself and know my own demerits so far from parting you i mean to-day to bind you in inseparable bonds for ever soon your eyes shall feast upon him rise fatima what wild alarm has seized her scene seven roxana atalid fatima ah madam come and see how all the palace is in possession of the traitor achmet his friends with sacrilegious hands have forced an entrance right into the royal harem your trembling slaves half of their number fled doubt whether he obeys or violates your will let's hasten to confound the traitors you guard my captive if you love your life scene eight atalid fatima alas i know not which should have my prayers the purposes of both alike unknown if any pity for such woes can touch you i beg you fatima not to betray roxana's secrets but to tell me only how fares it now with hapless bajazet say have you seen him is his life in danger i feel compassion for your troubles madam what has roxana given the fatal order already i am pledged to secrecy unhappy wretch but tell me that he lives tis much as life is worth to speak a word too cruel thus to torture make an end and give her yet a surer proof of zeal the silence pains worse than a dagger's point pitiless slave of a barbarian captive she fain would slay me pierce this heart yourself and show yourself worthy of such a mistress you cannot keep me here this very hour i must see bajazet or else must die scene nine atelid achmet fatima ah tell me madam where is bajazet have i yet time to save him i have searched the palace through and through at our first entrance we parted company with gallant osmond went half our valiant comrades and the rest have followed me elsewhere with hasty steps but all in vain for frightened slaves alone and flying women meet my anxious eyes alas i know his fate e'en less than you the slave can tell you all 
Hear my just wrath. Wretch, answer truly. Scene 10. Atelid Achbet Fatima Sara. Madam. Well, dear Zara, what is it? Fear no longer, for your foe is dying. Who? Roxana? Aye, and what may more surprise you, Orkan's hand has done it. Orkan? No doubt despair at baffled crime has goaded him to take this other victim. Heaven's justice then has succoured innocence. The prince yet lives. Run, Ahmed, and release him. You will learn all the truth from Osman's lips, who saw it done. Scene 11. Atelid Ahmed Osman Sarah. Have not her eyes deceived her? Is the Sultana dead? Yes. I have seen the assassin's dagger from her heart withdrawn, wet with her blood. Twas Orkan's cruel hand that did the deed, not unpremeditated, for he had secret orders from the Sultan to slay her lover first, and then Roxana. Ere we drew near, Orkan caught sight of us. Respect, said he, your royal master's mandate, and recognize his own imperial seal. Hence, traitors, quit the palace you profane. Saying these words, he left his dying victim, approached us, and with blood-stained hand unfolded the written order Amarath had given the wretch to execute this double murder but loath to hear him longer we my lord transported by the rage and grief that seized us with fierce impatience struck the monster down and so avenged the blood of bajazet of bajazet what say you he is dead did you not know it gracious heaven roxana fearing your succour nigh maddened with fury his life abandoned to the fatal bowstring that saddest sight of all myself i saw and vainly sought some lingering spark of life the prince was dead around his body lay dying or dead a noble band who fought for vengeance and by numbers overwhelmed accompanied his spirit to the shades now all is lost and we must save ourselves ah cruel fates to what have ye reduced me madam i know the loss that you have suffered in bajazet and reverence your sorrow too much to offer you the poor support of heart whose hopes leaned only upon him his death has overwhelmed me with despair no wish have i to save this guilty head but comrades in misfortune claim my care and to the end their lives will i defend as to yourself if you would shelter find in some far distant land consider now if you will trust my guidance masters here my faithful friends your wishes will await while i the favourable moment seizing hasten to make all needful preparation then where the sea washes the palace walls my vessels, furnished for their voyage, shall fetch you. Scene 12. Atelid Sara. All then at last is over. My deceits, unjust suspicions, and accursed caprices have brought me to this hour of agony, when through my crime I see my lover die. Was it not misery enough for me that cruel fate should doom me to survive him, that I must suffer torment past endurance, knowing his death due to my jealous madness? Yes, my beloved, it is I have slain thee, I only, not Roxana, nor the Sultan. My hand it was that wove the fatal snare into whose hateful meshes you hast fallen. Yet I outlived this horror at my heart, I, who so lately felt my senses leave me, at the mere dread of danger to his life. Alas, and has my very love destroyed thee? I cannot think upon it more. Be swift, my trusty hand, and let my blood atone. Ye heroes who in him should have revived your glory, whose repose I have disturbed, 
unhappy mother who with other hopes didst tell me that he loved me when a boy ill-fated ahmed friends disconsolate and thou roxana banded all against me come add fresh anguish to a frantic heart and take on me the vengeance i deserve she kills herself oh madam oh, she is dead would god that i heartbroken as i am with her might die end of act five end of bajazet by jean racine translated by robert bruce boswell